Hey guys and welcome back to another vlog. It is Monday, it is 6am and it's the start of the week. So this week I am going to vlog my whole week, Monday to Friday. It's week three here at King, so basically some of my other classes are starting up. This is one of the first full weeks that I have, so I thought I would share it with you all. So at the moment, it's 6 a.m. as I've said, and I've gotten up a little bit early so I can do some pre-reading for my class later. It's at 11 o'clock, so I wanted to get up a couple hours early just to like finish off that reading, go for a run, sort my life out. So that's what we're going to be doing this morning. So the reading this week is on utilitarianism. He set three pieces of reading. He wanted us to read a paper by Bentham, a paper by Mill, and a paper by Nozick. I've done Bentham and Nozick, I've just got Mill left and the one by Mill is 56 pages and I've read six <laughs> so we've got about 50 pages to read this morning which probably with note taking and um, will take me like two hours and then I've got to watch the half an hour lecture on that paper so hopefully hopefully we should be done by half eight and then I can go for a run for an hour and still come back and have time to like get ready before the class. So then I just read through all of the work that I needed to do for my seminar and then when it got a bit later and more of a respectable time I made a smoothie, this had banana and peanut butter, so loud though. So just got to Hyde Park, this is my halfway point so it's about four, four and a half kilometres to get to here. Now I've got to run back. <laughs> Has this account that treats all pleasure as equally valuable. Now, of course, the intensity of the pleasure will matter for how good the pleasure is when it comes to evaluating the morality of an action. But the game of pushpin is just as good as, for instance, the pleasure of high art, if the people who experience both of these pleasures experience them as equally pleasurable and with equal intensity. So now it is 11 o'clock and I'm literally just logging on to my seminar for ethics. This week we're discussing utilitarianism, we're doing Bentham, Mill and Nozick. So kind of some of the theories I've studied before in my undergrad, but basically, yeah, just going over old content and little bits of new. And we also did utilitarianism last week in my moral theory class. So basically half my modules this year are like the same thing. And then I just had some lunch, which was scampi with some salad. Okay, so now it's nearing to two o'clock. I finished my seminar, had to make a tweet, as you saw. And now I am going to get the tube and actually go into London. I feel like in all these vlogs so far and all these videos, I haven't even been into London, even though I've been here. So I am going to collect a book at the library and then hopefully do a little bit of a study session at the library. So then when I actually got to the library, it was about three o'clock, so I needed to release a video. So I did that and did a bit of promotion for it. And then I started writing in my diary what I needed to actually do in order to prepare for my medical law seminar. And this is it here. I wrote it in Tuesday because I basically had no room left on Mondays. Then I just started formatting my notes. So going in the VLE, typing up the questions for that week. So then I can kind of read with a purpose and know what I'm actually doing. And then I just started reading the textbook chapter that I needed to read for that week. So I just got back, got caught in the rain a little bit. So it's about, I think, half six maybe, getting towards half six now. And I just want to nip out and go to the shop up the road, get a few bits because I'm literally running out of food. And then I will come back, cook something, I think. And there's also a talk on tonight. It's It's about like... The American and Israeli relationship, something political, I don't actually recall 100% but I want to try and watch that. Hey guys. 
guys, so it's Tuesday. I've just had a shower and it's the most miserable weather outside. Can you see that? It's literally been like that most of the week. At the moment, I'm just tackling some of my reading for tomorrow's class. So I did quite a bit of it yesterday in the library and I'm just kind of going through the rest now. So for my medical law consent refusal and request class, she basically wanted us to read about 25 pages of a textbook then read 15 sections of statute, read the full explanatory notes for it, three chapters of the code of practice, a case and a journal article, and then answer 15 questions. So at the moment, I've done the textbook, I've done the statute, and I've done three quarters of the explanatory notes. And then it's just kind of the rest, which isn't that bad. Um, so I'm aiming to get this done by a good time today because then I still, I still need to do my reading for my moral theory class, which is also tomorrow. <laughs> and for that, I think we have about 40 pages of journals to read, which isn't too bad. That should probably take me two hours. So hopefully I'll do that this evening and get all this done at a good time. So that's what I'm doing at the moment. So then I just read through the chapters that I needed from the code of practice for the MCA. Okay, so now I'm doing lunch. So I basically just got a mixed Italian salad and then a crisp cake that's vegetarian and it's made up of cheese and onion. And these are actually very good. I absolutely love having these for lunch. Okay, so it's a little bit later now and there's a talk on tonight. I feel like at King's there's a talk on every night. Um, this one is with the Medical Ethics Society and it is the right to healthcare. So it's quite interesting. It very much mirrors my course and I signed up to the society purely because it's kind of like, it's almost like extra tuition for my course because all of the debates and things we do mirror the content of my course so well. Anyway, it's starting. That freaked me out. I thought I was off mute and I did that whole talk to you guys. All my learning stresses me out, okay. So the first dilemma with when we're talking about the right to healthcare is this first one. So intuitively, if you think about taking money against people's will in the form of taxation, which is what taxation is, taking money without choice, that seems wrong if you just look at it on a surface level. However, alternative would be allowing people to suffer because they can't afford healthcare. So that's one of the main clashes when we're talking about the right to healthcare. So the talk was structured into two halves. The first half was more of a talk and the second half opened into a debate. And as I listened to this, I restructured my notice board and updated it for this week. lighting's not doing me any favours. Um, so the talk just finished. It was actually really, really interesting. So it's for an hour. So the first half an hour was a F1 talking about the general ethical considerations around the right to, to healthcare and different arguments for and against and kind of like playing devil's advocate and showing the both sides to that story. And then the last half an hour was just opened to the floor and we all just kind of debated it and i have to say you know medical ethics society at king's it's just a really nice environment it's not what i expected at all because in all of my seminars even when we do have to debate things in seminars people don't really want to say anything they don't really want to get involved and they do it out of necessity rather than like passion <laughs> whereas in this society i mean i suppose it's because it's an optional event so people doing it are like interested but like a lot of people got involved it was quite like heated in parts almost and it was actually fun like people genuinely wanted to be there and wanted to talk about it and just discuss different ideas and keep it open and keep it interesting it's such a refreshing environment but now I have to do the rest of my seminar work for tomorrow. So I have about 40 pages left to read and then I've got a case to read and then to write up my questions. And then I still have another class to prep for, but I'm tempted because it's now half seven to go to bed at about 9.30 early-ish and then get up at about 5 a.m. tomorrow and do it tomorrow morning. We shall see how much I get done basically before 9 p.m. So then I aim to finish off the rest of my seminar prep for medical law. So I read the final chapter from the code of practice and then the cases and answered all of the problem questions. And it kind of took a while. It takes a while every week. So that's why I'm kind of up quite late. Welcome to my early morning study club. <laughs> um, it's about six in the morning. I've basically just gotten up early, literally for the second second time this week, which isn't great. I normally only like to do this once a week. 
gotten up early to just finish off some of my seminar reading for later today. Yeah, I've got about probably 40 pages to read and then a case study to do and then about three discussion questions which I've got to do by one o'clock, but obviously I have a seminar from 10 till 12, so I'll only have sort of half an hour over lunch probably, by the time I've had lunch. So I thought, you know what, let's just get up early. Let's get up early and just do it. So here we are. <laughs> So this week in Moral Theory, we're doing Deontology, which we already did last week in Ethics. So it was quite nice recapping over this, although there is still a lot of reading to do. Okay, so it's now eight o'clock. Just got changed into my like gym wear. I'm gonna do a quick, probably half an hour uh, hit workout. Trying to probably focus on the arms and shoulders and kind of abs. Um, but it's gonna see what we have time for until I need to get ready for my class. In the end, I managed to do two workouts from the Nike Training Club app. You guys know I love that app. It's such a good app for HIIT training exercises. So I did one 20 minute shoulder shaper workout, which basically focused on using weights for the upper body. And then I did a quick 10 minute abs blast. And I love doing the abs blast because I feel like 10 minutes is enough just to keep ticking over. Then I got ready and joined my medical law seminar. And this week we were discussing adults lacking capacity, the best interest tests, basically stuff that I did on my undergrad. So I've just finished that class. I don't know what it is, but sometimes these classes just zap the life out of me, especially medical law. Like, I don't know, it's not even a seminar really because she spends two hours talking, occasionally asks if anybody has a question. They rarely do. And then she goes back to talking. It's not really a discussion. It's, it's literally like a glorified lecture or a plenary. So it's like, 10 a.m. on a Wednesday morning, it takes a lot for me to push through it. And also the content is literally everything that I've studied before on my mental capacity law module in my undergrad. Yeah, so every Wednesday I'm like, stay awake, get through it, get through it. <laughs> uh, so at least that's done now for another week. I'm literally just sitting down to have lunch. Basically, you'll see from this vlog, I, I pretty much have a salad every day. It just is what it is. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just gonna have this and then I'm gonna answer the remaining um, discussion questions for my seminar for moral theory and medical ethics because I've got two and a half questions left to, to, to finish the answer to. And we like answer these questions in the breakout rooms. So like, I need to answer them because <laughs> there'll be like three of us sitting in a room otherwise and I'll be like, they're like, Silent. So I'm gonna do that now. So as I had lunch, I was just finishing off these questions for moral theory. The questions this week were centered around, is there anything so valuable that it can't be sacrificed in terms of like morality? And also there's a question about whether clinicians are always obliged to save as many lives as possible. Okay, so we had a little issue with the sink a few days ago, but then today I put my washing on thinking it'd be fine, thinking that it wouldn't be connected. <sighs> I literally walked into the kitchen to find the sink overflowing going all across the floor. Oh no, 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 no. So, okay, so it's now one o'clock and I'm just about to start my, well, I'm in my moral theory and medical ethics lecture. This goes on till three. Friday or the end of Friday now. Um, I'm hoping to make all previous recordings available on Keats. Oh yeah, by the way, I got changed to take an Instagram photo. Just roll it in. Start on the first one, like, like, traditional? Yeah. I guess you might be able to argue that morality itself is so valuable that it can't be sacrificed. They have that obligation to save lives, but it is at to what cost. So, like, as long as the resources allow it, and they can actually dedicate a quality of and standard of care that, you know, people would expect in order for them to do the job, then I feel like it's, it, if you're giving that, then save as many people as you can. So I honestly decided, oh, there's a chopper going over. I, all, I just decided that I've been in the house too long and I just wanted to get out, have some fresh air, although now it's raining, which kind of like, bad idea. So for dinner, I made a risotto. This is actually one of Gino Diacampo's recipes, which I absolutely love. It's something I make probably weekly. And because Wednesday is more like my Friday and I need wine for the risotto, I always like have a little bit, okay? It's very dark 
work today. But uh, it's time to do a workout, so I'm gonna do legs today. So you know the drill. I did the night training club app hit session. It was mainly focused on the lower leg and I kind of like using weights as well, just to switch up the workout. So it's not all body weight stuff. Then I ended up editing a few YouTube videos and this took me most of the day. And then as you can see, I'm having leftover risotto from last night, which is always a good thing about risotto. I just kind of heat it up, have it the next day. And then I went on a little bit of a run around the Thames path. Like look at London in the evening, look how nice. Don't mind me lying on the floor, I'm just, I'm recovering. Basically, um, just went for a run, only a little one, about three, four K. And um, yeah, just to kind of like leave the house. You know, when you're at a point where you're like, I just need to leave the house. I just need to see people. Um, kind of busy, Thames Path, literally dodging people. Should have expected that really. <laughs> um, but now I want to get ready for my Spanish class. Okay, so I'm ready for my Spanish class now, but I'm a bit nervous for it because last week I signed up to basically what turned out to be the wrong class. Just roll the clip. They'd make you do these online tests, right, which tell you what level you should be at. So I did all the tests and they were like, yeah, level three. So I was like, enroll into a level three. Did that. And obviously now I've done that and she's sending all these materials through. I'm like, oh, it's hard. I'm going to find it hard. But at the end of the day, I can always transfer down a level. And that's exactly what I did. So basically I leveled down to level two, which is the equivalent to an A2 or like GCSE A star or like low A level equivalent so that's what we're doing and i really really hope this is the right level because otherwise this is going to stress me out Empezar aclarando algunas cosas por ejemplo la primera cosa todos dos cuatro seis ocho nueve entonces cuál es la diferencia cuando decimos a las doce y cinco no at mientras que cuando decimos son so the Spanish class varies, we do a lot of talking in pairs, we also play games, so here we're playing Kahoot, and then he also gives us like a mini lecture too. Okay, so I just finished my Spanish class and my brain is literally throbbing, like I'm getting a migraine, oh my god. The thing is, I understand way more than I can articulate, and it's frustrating because I feel like my like pronunciation is fine, but it's it's in terms of actually like speaking because i just don't do it like who do i know that's that's spanish um is so bad and like people are gonna be like who is this like she can't speak um but i understand what's going on it just takes me a while to warm up into spanish because i haven't spoken it in a very long time um so it's kind of just like uh... but having said that there were people in that class who were like hola como estas and it made me it boosted my confidence <laughs> so i was like do you know what we're in the right class i just feel like i need a few weeks to like warm up and in the meantime i'm going to be doing all his homework all these links listening to all my spanish tunes and just trying to like connect the spanish vocab in my brain with my the part of my brain that like speaks so i can so i can talk you know así puedo hablar en español Ahora mi español no es bueno. <laughs> español es difícil, difícil. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's Friday. So today is like a YouTube day, pretty much, same as yesterday. Um, I am just. Sorry, a double decker bus just went past with a big ad of Julian Anderson on it, and I thought, ooh, Julian Anderson. Um, anyway. Basically, yeah, today uh, it's just a YouTube day, so I want to film a couple of videos and edit. So, yeah, and then I'm going out tonight, uh, going into London for drinks with my course mates. So, yeah, it's quite a chill day, really. Okay, so I've just finished filming. Don't mind my mess. Just finished filming. And then now I'm, like, importing the footage and editing up this video, which is this video now. Oh, I don't know if it's going to pick it up, but look how lovely. Marvellous. 
So then I had dinner, I had this cod fillet with lemon and herb seasoning and a salad and then I made my way into London. It was such a fiasco as well because three or four tube stations were down that were on my route so I had to take the long way which meant I was a little bit late but hey ho. But it also meant that I had to walk a different route to the place that we were going. I got to go over the Millennium Bridge, like look at all of that scenery and then we had drinks and then we had a good time. This is the end of the video. I kind of forgot to sign it off. Um, I ended up having a really good night and it was kind of good to meet people from my course for the first time. I, I feel like a lot of them aren't in London and if they are, then they're like over 35. So they're not like really my age group. So it was actually nice to kind of meet people that are my age group and are in London. <laughs> That's the end of this video. I hope you liked it. Let me know if you want more vlogs or weeks in my life in the future. Give this video a big thumbs up and yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.